gentlemen, boys, girls, ladies, and gentle thems, our colliders, welcome to the Collision Post Show over here on Fightful. It's your girl, Cressa Star, joined by my favorite, my two-woman power trip, Iridian. How are you today, Iridian? I am doing fantastic, Cresta. How are you? I know you look fantastic, but how are you feeling? I feel fantabulous, and I'm glad to have all of you guys here with us. And if you guys are having a good time, you're happy to be a collider, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to Fightful Select. Give us a super chat. It helps keep the lights on. Give us a humper chat. We get to keep just a little bit more of the proceeds. We're happy. The Decepticons are happy. Humperchats.com. Our lovely Ma Drew in the chat will get us to read all of those. He will make sure. Iridium will make sure, even if my eyeballs don't work. What did you think about Collision? We see it all. I thought Collision was really great. I really went into it with no like certain expectations. But every single match, I was like, oh, this is good. Oh, okay. Like I was surprisingly shocked. So good on Di- I was good on Dynamite. Good on Collision for putting on a banger tonight. I thought it was a really great show. What did you think? I agree. And low key, very low key. Okay. It was giving like big Dynamite. I mean, like it felt very big. So I agree with that little yeah, like. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm like, like I, oh, oh, wait, wrong one. <laughs> Collision has its own identity, absolutely, but tonight felt very big. It was a big night. To me, it was, at least. I enjoyed it. Guys, let us know if you enjoyed it. Like I said, send in a humper chat, super chat. Let's get right into it. (laughs) Let's talk about a big night. Okay, I'm going to butcher his name. I've been practicing his name before I got on here, so I wouldn't. Oh, no. (laughs) This is an Andrade El Idolo situation for me, okay? Katsuyori Shibata. I hope I, I mean, said it right. I mean, your guess is as good as mine because I I think I wrote it off phonetically too, but I'm, I'm looking at it now and I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. Um, Yeah, I, I say Katsuyori, so Shibata. We know Shibata. If I'm wrong, please so correct sorry. me in the comments. Yes. We are so sorry. Versus Brian Danielson. Mm-hmm. What a match. What a match to start, like, on free, for free, for free, Tony, Tony, for free. Mm -hmm. What a good match. This was everything before the commercial break was technical grappling, wrestling, and tests of will. Um, Shabbat is matching Danielson move for move, like I was saying in the beginning. And commentary made it a point to say that these men were once both told at one point in their life, you will never wrestle again. You, it's over for you. Like, we understand this is your dream, but, you know, dreams are nightmares too. In my time, you got to pack it up. Yeah. So there was a nice bow and arrow stretch on Danielson that I think was, no, that Shibata, um countered into, no, from the um, psycho knee. Mm-hmm. We go to commercial break. We come back, and then these men said, okay, we're done with this whole stuff. Stiff. Forearm to forearm. There was a brutal missile kick to Brian Danielson in the corner from Shibata, and I audibly said, because <laughs> it looked like he kicked this man's guts out. It was so gnarly. When we get to the end, there's a LaBelle lock countered like 15 times, it seemed like, but Bryanson eventually, I'm sorry, Danielson gets the crucifix pin on Shibata. And oh my God. Oh my God. There were so many spots, Iridian. <laughs> what did, like, I, I know I'm missing so many. And I, I didn't even talk about the crisscross slapping each other's spot. Like, what did you think of this? Man, this was such a great match to start the night off with because I think it really set the tone for this collision overall. And I love that Nigel talked about how, you know, they both suffered head injuries, but then they came back to wrestle. And he also reminded the audience that Brian Danielson is like, you know, picking and choosing who he's fighting. And he's really gone like all over the place with who he's chosen to have these matches with. So Danielson's chest was looking medium rare by the end of the night. Okay. My shirt, Danielson's chest. It was tender. It was really tender. I was like, no way. There's no way. And this was not an easy match. You know, like you said, it was hard hitting. And when they sat crisscross applesauce in front of each other, I knew that I was like, this is it. We're we're super serious. This is no more games. Okay. I knew that things were about to go down. And then I wrote down, why is everything so loud? The slaps and the hits, everything was so loud. I was like, no, it hurts. 
I have to tell you, Iridian, we are sharing the same brain cell because earlier today I saw a meme that says never trust someone named Chris because if Chris crossed applesauce, what do you think he's going to do to you? Mm -hmm. And we said that I died. Yep. <laughs> Find anyone named Chris. I don't make it up. This is the internet rules. This match was just. I, I sometimes find technical wrestling to be a bit slow for my taste. Mm. Every time Brian Danielson wrestles, I'm I'm sad. I'm sporting <laughs> pains. I'm I'm I. I I'm in the heart. It's so good. And this match was no exception. And again, for free on a Saturday, Tony. Yeah, and especially one to start off the night. The, it's literally insane. And it's interesting that you said that you are not like the, the biggest fan of technical wrestling. I have recently discovered that I might be a technical wrestling girly. Uh that that might be like my thing. Like I absolutely love it. You know, Serena Deeb. I'm not like the biggest fan of her, but the way that she wrestles is just so amazing to me. Same mm -hmm. thing with Gianna Perrazzo. Um, same thing with Zack Sabre Jr. Like, I love how all these wrestlers are like technical. So watching Danielson and Shibata go at it tonight, I was like, wow, this mm -hmm. is really, really incredible. And man, that iron octopus that he put him in, that was crazy. That uh, honestly, like all of my bones cracked just seeing <laughs> it. <laughs> I needed to go to a chiropractor after that match. Like this match... Now that you say maybe I'm a technical wrestling girly too, because I do love a Deanna Perrazzo. I do love a Serena Deeb, a Shibata too. Like interesting, interesting. Self-discovery here on, on the Collision Post <laughs> show. In the words of Disney, something has changed within me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's Broadway. Wrong show. Anyway, <laughs> next we had a break, uh, like a promo video package mm -hmm. recapping Mercedes Monet at Big Business, which I went to, by the way. So good. So good. Don't listen to what anyone tells you. That arena was loud chanting CEO. I am deaf. I am deaf off. <laughs> it was so good. Next, we got Julia Hart versus Trisha Dora. This was for the TBS championship title. Um, for the TBS championship title, mm -hmm. loser could not, I'm sorry, loser was banned from ringside later on for the tag team qualifier. What I thought was going to happen did not happen. And <laughs> Trisha Dora, you did that, girl. Mm. I thought, what I thought was Julia Hart was going to hit the one-two blue skidoma spit in your face, time to cheat. Mm. I thought it was going to be a very... But I, will, I am putting all the respect on Trisha Dora's name. She stretched that girl. Who? Who she stretched that girl every which way but Sunday. Who today was technical church. She stretched that. Let me let me get to the notes. <laughs> <laughs> so she tries to get the heartless, and it gets my notes are actually dog on this. Go ahead and read in. I'm looking so, at my notes like it's not I, good. I had a question immediately mm -hmm. when they came out and they were like, this is a house rules match. I'm like, what does this mean? And I guess, you know, Julia was able to pick her stipulation that if whoever won, of course, had the championship, but then was allowed to go with their team to the tag team match that was going to happen later tonight, which was the main event. And whoever lost was just banned from ringside. So in my part, I was like, that's kind of like a lame stipulation. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. I was confused by that because I thought that was only for the trios. Mm. But as I am afraid of House of Black, I wasn't going to question it. Same. I was like, all right, Julia, you do you. I mean, sure. Why not? You can you can make up all the rules. Um, but I knew that when Trisha Dora came out, I'm like, this is going to be a banger because mm -hmm. they are just so, so good. And Trisha Dora being an army vet, shout outs to her. OK, 10 out of 10 just on that alone. And you didn't mention the stretch when Trisha Dora did that split on Julia's back and then was just stretching her arms in the air, I yelled. <laughs> we need to go to a chiropractor, a masseuse after this, just watching this. I feel like taffy. I got worked. <laughs> yes. It was just such a, like visually, uh, it mm -hmm. was it looked great. So it was amazing. And then Julia flipped Trisha Dora onto the barricade, but it was the screened barricade. So I just knew immediately that that hurt because she made a mm. thwop, thwopping sound. It was disgusting, but I was here for it. I'm like, yes, I'm glad that also we were getting a women's match early 
not at the usual spot. So shout out to you, Tony Khan, for watching the post show with us and learning a little something, something. But it was the only women's match that we had tonight. So, eh. you know, no. you, win, you win some, you lose some, right? We got to take the wins where we get it. Um, we get to the end was... I thought it was very interesting because I, I don't think I've ever seen Julia Hart win with a moonsault. She won yeah. with a moonsault, pin Trisha Dora clean as a fiddle. Not mad at it. Not mad at it. Trisha Dora is amazing. I'm very happy for her. Um, again, the stipulation was a little weird. Mm -hmm. Not mad at the match. But it was a beautiful moonsault on Julia, yes. right? Like it was so <laughs> clean and good for her, man. And she is now three and one, I believe in singles competition. So she's starting off the year off hot. I, I appreciate it. Okay. So we have our first Humper chat of the night. Thank you Ooh. so much. Jenny with the $5 Humper chat says, do you know if anything is up with Nigel saying there's only three BCC members beyond Yuta being injured? Interesting. So I think Yuta, um, they're just keeping him to the side right now because he is injured. Um, but I think that he, I don't think he meant anything crazy by it. I think you'd have still in the Blackpool Combat Club. Um, yeah. That's I will I say, either. you, not you, Nigel tonight was on his job. He was a, he was a supreme hater. So I don't know. He was a hater so much tonight that Tony Khan, not Tony Khan, Tony Schiavone twice had to be like, yo, you good? <laughs> he, he really did. He was like, Nigel, like, like, I know he was turned around like, sir. He's like, yo, did you, you need a Snickers, my guy. I, you hungry? Like, <laughs> he was on oh, one on the Brian Sid match. And he was just on one for the rest of the night. He really did. He continued to be a menace. But um, one thing that they also did after this match is they announced that, I believe on Dynamite or Rampage, I'm not sure which one, but we're going to get to see Julia and Sky Blue versus Willow and Chris Statlander. That's going to be also a banger. So I'm really excited about that. I can't wait. I can't wait. Speaking of can't wait, we are up next. Harley Cameron, Zach Cross. That is his name, right? Zach Cross. I'm saying it right. Zach Knight. Zach Knight. Ooh, who is Zach Cross, which, girl? Which, hold on, because this man came up on the screen. I said, who is this? <laughs> I said, who is this man? And then I wrote three question marks. But then I was like, I like the accent. 10 out of 10. I'm very confused, guys. Uh, is he new? I'm so sorry. If I'm not mistaken, that is Soraya's brother. Okay. Then I do know of him, but I, I, this is the first TV time that I've seen him, like, promo-wise. I haven't seen him paired up with... Um, with yeah, Harley yeah. Cameron. I was like, what, what's transpiring? I was I was very confused by this. So yeah. this is one of those things where I was like, okay, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. Let me blink my mind. <laughs> so Mr. Knight says, I'm not fighting you here in Canada. <laughs> This, I'm going to do it on my terms. Just because you want to fight doesn't mean I want to fight. Then Harley Cameron says, <laughs> and I don't know why I found this so funny. She was like, yeah, he does what he wants. It's his queen on your money. Wow. Why Canada catch it astray? <laughs> what, what, what did Canada do? <laughs> like, why? Harley, she is so funny when they just let her be her. Because on QTV, she was really mm. the star. She was out there making the jokes, making people laugh. And I think that she's also gonna get a chance to really shine i don't i don't think they found her place yet but she could um, be working with zach because this was funny i thought this little promo was hilarious even though i didn't was know kind who of he was, unhinged but... i was like what is this <laughs> i was more confused but as the as it went on it got more chaotic and the more chaotic it got i was like oh this is great <laughs> i don't know what's happening but i'm kind of like here it. for it i'm yeah. kind of here for it i love a good um Listen, if Tony Storm could throw shoes and talk about socking people in the box, we can get some unhinged, this is not even your money. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Next, we got a secret banger, but we all knew it was going to be a banger. Lee Moriarty versus Daniel mm -hmm. Garcia. Now, <clears throat> in my humble opinion, and I'm not Miss Cleo, even though I've got the antennas giving me the scoops. But I feel like Daniel Garcia is on that rise that when, um, oh my God, his name is leaving me. I wrote it down. That Ricky Starks feel when Ricky mm -hmm. Starks was coming up, Daniel Garcia's right there. It's 
it's it's so organic. He comes out, the crowd goes nuts for him. You want to root for him. And I'm still reminded of what he said at World's End. when He's like, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. And all I'm going to do is keep getting better and keep getting better. And him tonight versus Lee Moriarty. Mm-hmm. Another technical. This was what was a tribute show to Ryan Danielson. <laughs> That's why uh, Nigel was upset all night. There were so many technical matches. He was like, I, I'm angry. Tonight, I, I, I see what's going on. Boo mm-hmm. hiss. Like, yo. Yeah. So we also had Shane Taylor out there. Daddy Magic was on commentary. Um, and we start off <laughs> this match hot with <laughs> Nigel McGinnis saying to Daddy Magic, straight to his face, when is Daniel going to accept that he'll never be champion? Yo, Nigel McGinnis, the match didn't even start. Why do you have this much hate? <laughs> you know what? I think that Nigel, throughout the week, sometimes he'll be like, oh, man, oh, I like that one. And he'll write it down <laughs> in his little notebook. And he'll be like, I got so much material for next week. And that's what he does. Yo, he's so mean. <laughs> I I mean, I love a good heel. But, yo, Nigel McGinnis... I think he does watch this show because we said he's like third or fourth hater. He's like, nah, we goes rookie numbers. We got to get these mm-hmm. numbers up. He yep. was on it tonight. There was a super large um, uh, leap and stomp. Well, I don't mm-hmm. know what it was called from Garcia on. No, from Lee to Garcia. And I wanted to vomit. I was like. Because it it really the way that he landed, it looked like he landed right on his oh, guts. Awkward. Yeah. It was insane. And it looked like a like a really hard hitting hit. <laughs> yeah, like like, <laughs> it, like, like the, it was it made you want to concave. That's what it was. Yes. <laughs> like I don't know what to call it, but it was like, bro, wrestlers are our strongest warriors because y'all <laughs> couldn't be me week after week. Absolutely not. Mm-mm. Oh, oh my goodness. We do get um after that the the finish comes with a single leg hook a oh, single leg hook heel tap win. Say that nine times fast, Jesus. A <laughs> uh, win for Garcia. I love that Garcia is getting these submission wins. Yeah, he's dancey dance, but he also will break your leg. And that's kind of a good segue into Darby Allen's video package that they had for his foot. Before mm-hmm. we get into that what are your thoughts on the match already? This was, I think, a hidden gem of the night. Uh-huh. And it might have slipped under people's radar. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, compared to every other match that happened. But I think that this one was really important because Danny Garcia, I think his, you know, what he's doing in wrestling right now, it's like a slow burn, right? Especially uh-huh. in AEW. Like, what are they trying to do with him? So they're trying to keep him getting his his little steam right picking up steam and lee moriarty i think that man is absolutely fantastic i can't say enough great things about lee moriarty and i want him to be in the next continental classic because look at what that did for danny garcia in terms of you know he's getting these bigger opportunities now and though he didn't win the tournament he didn't need to win it because he came out a star and i think that that can really happen with a guy like lee moriarty uh-huh. especially because he's very quick he's so athletic and i want to see him against guys like pack against penta you know commander angelico like these guys who can really do some incredible things in the ring because i think that lee can absolutely keep up and uh-huh. He just is just so quick and he's vicious. So I think like, I, again, I always say this this week that I want to see more of these wrestlers, but I really do think that Lee Moriarty can be a top guy. He can be a main eventer if they give him these opportunities, because this was a really great showing for him. And I'm really glad that Shane did not get involved because I like, I was like, Oh, please don't. I hate when people are ringside and they get involved unless it's like some funny shenanigans stuff, which is totally fine. But the fact that he didn't interfere with the match, I was like, yes, I love this, and good for Danny for picking up that win because he needed it. And it's just so nice to see Daddy Magic come in and support him afterwards. And also Daddy Magic on commentary, I'm here for it. Could you imagine just him and Nigel? I mean, that brings us to our first Super Chat. want to say thank you so much to Tyrone Kid. With all, with all this hate, we need Nigel versus Brian versus Cope. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of haters. Mm-hmm. In AEW, you're leaving out Stokely Hathaway, who's yeah. a professional hater. 
mm-hmm. like a, a literal professional hater. <laughs> yeah. I would watch it though. I'd be sports entertained, but I feel like if if Adam Copeland don't win that match. <laughs> Wait, but Bryanson is, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. All I know is that Nigel is tapping. That's all I do know. <laughs> Nigel is tapping. No matter who wins, Nigel taps. Mm. <clears throat> I agree with you, yeah. Sorry, y'all. I'm also fighting off my voice being lost from chanting CEO from Big Business. <laughs> uh, we do get into, like I said, the update on Darby <laughs> Allen. His foot, unfortunately, was broken with that match with him and Jay White. and. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to go climb Mount Everest. Okay, that's insane, right? I love I love Darby Allen, but we see him every week out there risking it all. And I am glad that he's not going to go climb Mount Everest because that is so extremely dangerous. I know it's on his probably bucket list. I'm uh-huh. glad he's not doing it. I need that man, after all that he's done in wrestling and AW so far, to just relax, to just go home, spend two, three weeks in bed, fully recover your body and be healthy and then start, you know, doing everything. What I thought was insane was that TMZ was reporting on this story, right? And they showed Darby Allen's foot with his little chunky, chunky toes out. And then <laughs> Jay, Jay White goes on Twitter and was, was like talking to TMZ about how they did terrible reporting job because they didn't even mention him and that he was the one that broke his foot. <laughs> That is a very Jay White thing. That is I a super Jay White thing. <laughs> loved it. I thought that was hilarious. But um, I hope that Darby is just at home recovering, chilling, eating good food, watching good videos, like having a blast on TikTok. <laughs> very that. I want to say that for a long time, we were saying that people like him, mm-hmm. Orange Cassidy, uh, Bianca Belair comes to mind as well. Yeah. Please take a break. Please take a break. I understand you did this thing with Sting and it's a childhood dream. And now you're going to go climb Mount Everest. I hope you get the best massages. Get well soon. Mm-hmm. Eat lots of food. Eat your favorite. If you need show recommendations, yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever watch Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen? <laughs> <laughs> you ever watch One Piece? I heard that's really long. <laughs> You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to help. I hope you get well soon, though. Mm-hmm. All in all seriousness, and also Jay White, what a heel! <laughs> what a heel! <laughs> what a heel! What a twenty four seven. Jay White never stops. He said, "I don't care." You ever know? You ever heard of that meme where the guy says, "You know what? I'm gonna say it. I don't care that you broke your elbow." Oh That's my Jay god! White right now, the <laughs> Darby, I'm gonna say it. I don't care that you broke it. your foot. I don't care. You know, I oh. did. It was me all along. Like Jay White, you're such a bully. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of bullies, Aaron Solo versus the Bastard Pack. I respect Aaron Solo because once that bell rung, he said, I got one shot and I'm taking it. Mm. He started off hot. He was giving Pack the push around. And the moment I started writing, starting off hot, never mind. Stomping out Aaron in the corner. Mm. (laughs) The welcome back chant started. And before I could finish riding big shotgun kick to the corner, Aaron Solo got the black arrow into a brutalizer. Welcome back, Pac. I mean, I on the one hand, I lived, but on the other hand, I mourned the loss. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I didn't know who Pac was fighting. So then to, when I heard Dasha just be like, Aaron Solo, I was like, Aaron Solo? From QTV? No entrance, no nothing? Oh, my God. I said, this is this is not going to go well. Immediately, I knew this was not going to go well. And Pac gets in there, and he's looking at, at Aaron, and he's kind of, like, pointing at him. And, like, Tony Shivani is on commentary talking about how Pac is saying, you know, oh, he's kind of gesturing to Solo, trying to compare his body. And Tony's like, well, you can't do that. You can't compare Pac's body to Solo. And I'm like, okay, Tony, you're just throwing strays out there too. Like poor Aaron Solo was not going to catch a break tonight. One thing that commentary did get right was they said that Pac invades your personal space. And that needs to be on a t-shirt because the way that he was up on Aaron Solo tonight, it had to be illegal. Absolutely had to be illegal. It was insane. Crazy. Again, a tribute night to Brian Danielson. Okay? That's what this was. 
That's yeah. what this was. Everything was a technical. This wasn't, I mean, it was a technical banger, but it was one-sided. Mm. We get the end of the match. Post-match, Pac is upset. <clears throat> and breathing hard. Breathing hard. Like me, I'm fighting for my life, and so is he. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting over here. And he looks and says, Tony, when I said I was looking for trouble, I didn't mean that. I'm like, yo, Arisolo's already dead, bro. Like, <laughs> you just... I'm telling you, he just kept catching strays. Like, he's like, yo, I, I, I came to work today. I did not come to work for this. This is ridiculous. He's like, I didn't come looking for this. Arisolo rolling out the ring. He's like, listen, Tony, if you do not find me actual, actual competition, mm -hmm. actual trouble, I'm going to go find it myself. And my mind immediately went to, who does Pac hate the most? I also apologize if you hear my cat, because my cat has found something that she hates the most. <laughs> In my mind, I want to jump to conclusions. If one thing I'm good at is jumping to conclusions, I'm like, what if he goes find trouble with Will Ospreay? I don't deserve that, but I want to see it. I, I need that. I want that. Interesting. I honestly, when he said, I... <clears throat> I wasn't, I didn't mean this trouble. I have no idea who he's talking about. Somebody got to fill in the blanks for me because it was not clicking. <laughs> I was like, okay, Orange Cassidy? But then I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, he wants to fight like a beefy guy. You know, Pac uh -huh. is in there. Like he weighs 500 pounds. He walks out there like he's very dense. And when you see him wrestle, you're like, yes, that man is 500 pounds. Like, there's no way that he's not 500 pounds because he's a hard hitter. He's tough. And I feel like he wants, like, a bigger guy. But in my mind, I was like, Brian Cage? Like, things were not adding up to me. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, who is somebody? Like, I'm thinking he doesn't want people like Aaron Solo. All respect, all due respect to Aaron Solo. I'm thinking Pac wants to jump the line. You want a Malachi Black. Mm. Somebody said in China, Brody King, mm -hmm. you want a um, maybe even a Wardlow or you John want Moxley. He wants somebody that's big, someone yes. with a big name or a big guy. So I just need him to put, put a list out, honestly. Yeah, like Samoa Joe said, who who you want me to fight? You tell me, shout him out. I'll beat him up. I'll yep. beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> we have. Um, I hope I say your name right. Adelia Chamberlain, a member for 14 months, saying Yay. the miracles of modern medicine, Shibata, Danielson, Pat, and O'Reilly all thought their careers might be over, but they were all incredible tonight. I'll go ahead and add Soraya to that list. Mm. Soraya was also someone who thought that their career, um, Adam Copeland was also someone like he, they mentioned tonight in his like he mentioned tonight in his promo that they thought that their career was going to be over. I am I am grateful being a fan now, getting to see all these people. I didn't go through the heartbreak a lot of you guys did, sorry. But seeing <laughs> these people come back the triumph, uh it gives me goosebumps. Iridian, what do you what do you think about that? Yeah, man, I I'm just so grateful for all of these wrestlers who have, you know, been injured and been able to come back because it is so tough. We see what they do with their bodies every single week, not only for the love of wrestling, but also for the love that they have for us as fans. So that's just something that you have to respect. And that's why we love these wrestlers so much too, right? Because we know that they also are there for us in like, you know, when times that we need them, they're super entertaining to us and we develop like that relationship with them. But man, the fact that all of these guys were putting on bangers tonight, that that's literally insane. And, you know, we've seen these guys retire, you know, Brian Danielson, he, when he retired, like that was so, I, I have flashbacks to that. And, you know, when he came back, he's like, you know, my wife told me, if you fight for your dreams, your dreams will fight for you. Like insane stuff. Like you just remember these things and look at them now. And hopefully they just continue to do what they love. And everyone that's injured can heal up and be better mm -hmm. because it's tough, right? When you can't do the thing that you love anymore, it's it's so tough for them. But yeah, I, I agree with her. And thanks so much for being a member for 14 months. Dedication. We love it. You are fantastic. And that's also a great segue into the Brian Danielson promo mm -hmm. we got afterwards. This man is sitting, again, crisscross applesauce. And saying gratitude. Now, I 
I am a sucker for stuff like this. This to me was so poetic because he talks about exactly, I was told I was never, the both of us were told we were never going to wrestle again. And tonight we put on art, if you will, if you are a wrestling fan. And he said, I heard what you said last week, Osprey. And you talked about, you know, if it's me or you in the ring, I don't plan on dying. He didn't say bruv, which I was a little disappointed in. But then he got super serious and said, that's how I know you couldn't walk a mile in my shoes. Because I was ready to die. Yo, at that point, you could have played the ether music in the background. He was like, I was ready to die for this. You not ready to die for this. You don't plan on dying. <laughs> you not ready to do what I do. So I know that I can beat you. I was like, oh, and the numbers don't lie. <laughs> what? <laughs> A promo. I, I, how do you, what do you say to a man who says, I'm ready to die in this ring? Are you? That's so wild, right? I think this is such a fantastic promo from Brian because it's literally true. This guy said, I was, we were banging on death's door because, like, insane literally insane it was just so good when he said that i'm like there's no way there's no way that he told will osprey that you're you know you followed my career this whole time and you followed my footsteps but you really haven't you really haven't and he got him there i was like damn i mean so not good. for nothing if even if you played the lance archer music in the background it would be fitting to everybody that's so like that what a good promo mm -hmm. it gave me goosebumps i'm like that's that's crazy again what do you say to somebody like that like yeah i i was i almost i was knocking on death door like what up it's your boy demons and you talk about you follow my footsteps you think you know but you have no idea shout out sam tv but mm -hmm. like <laughs> what a good promo yeah what a good promo Fantastic. It was Brian Danielson just has this connection with people. And you can just tell that this man really risks it all, all the time. And in this promo, he said that he almost did. So incredible. And I did like how it transitioned from that promo to another BCC member and Claudio mm -hmm. and Lance Archer. And incredible. I am ready to talk about this one. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets on what you think might happen. Before you place your bets, let me give you some information on how to place a smart bet. BetOnline.ag is the official betting partner of Fightful. 100% of the time when you get the odds from Fightful, they are coming from BetOnline.ag. And it's not just wrestling. It's not just MMA and boxing. It's football, it's basketball, baseball, hockey. They have the earliest lines. You can bet big with the high limits and rebet functionality. They have the fastest payouts with winnings paid in minutes and the industry's best bonuses on every qualifying deposit. They've been trusted for 25 plus years. It's not some fly-by-night company. Bet Online AG has been there. They've done that. In addition, they're trusted by millions. They've got VIP rewards programs and a ton of popular games. BetOnline.ag, that's where I go to make my bets. That's where I suggest you go to, my friends. Please just bet what you can and bet responsibly. Thank you so much, Bet Online, for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you can help support us over here at Fightful, the best five bucks in the biz. We've got interviews. We got Ask Grap City. We got Q&A with your boy, Sean. All that fun stuff over on Fightful. You're going to get the news from us anyway. Period. So come on in. We got yuck yucks. We got smart smarts. All we need is your heart hearts. You're welcome, brother. That's free. All right. <laughs> Next, we have Claudio Castagnoli versus Lance Archer. Now, I told you to make and place your bets here. Mm -hmm. Now, me and Iridian, or myself and Iridian, my grandmother's smacking my hands right now. We always say Lance Archer can win everywhere else mm -hmm. but AEW. But tonight, tonight, Lance Archer was like, this is New Japan, Lance Archer. He didn't come out with the with the enhancement talent in hand, which made me kind of sad because I do miss that. But Lance Archer and Claudio was putting on a 
big meaty men slapping meat match. So you know I was already excited. The beginning of this match, Tony got Nigel together. He said, I, I put, I'm glad that Tony called Nigel out. The hating is getting extra hard out of hand. Tony said to Nigel, did Bryanson whip you so hard that time <laughs> that you like you lost your mind? And when I said, get him, get him. <laughs> Again, I don't know why Nigel was on one, but I am sports entertained. He's getting up those Ricky numbers, play a hate of the year. He's coming in hot. Um, there was a meat chance. No man was budging. There was a cannonball sent on off the apron to Claudio from Lance Archer to the outside. Now, there, we, can, we go to commercial and we come back. There's a running, dragging DDT off the top rope on Archer from Claudio. And we finally get the swing on Archer. And right when things were about to get out of hand and get real crazy and the swing was underway, here come the righteous. We get a DQ. Brian Danielson and Shibata comes out to even the odds. The righteous and Lance Archer run away. Commentary did mention that Lance Archer and the righteous, along with Jake the Snake, now have an alliance. Mm. I'm a little confused by this. I didn't <laughs> hate it. The match was fine, but why is Lance Archer with the Righteous? I I don't hate it. This is the first time that I've been excited to see the Righteous come out. Um, and that's no shade to them because I always call them Flower Power. But like today, I knew who they were. I knew their names. Uh -huh. So see what happens when you give Lance a chance, guys. Give Lance a chance. Hashtag <laughs> give Lance a chance because... This was such a great match. The fact that Lance and Claudio were so like well matched in like build, I'm like, that just adds to it, right? Because Claudio had that man straight up in the air. I'm like, there's no way he's doing that right now. These guys are superheroes in this ring and everything. They were hitting each other so hard. Like it was just so, so good. And I'm like, see, this is what we could be getting. Instead of giving us little jobber matches with him, just swinging people um well he was getting swung tonight but <laughs> i'm telling and you and that's so rare so crazy, rare crazy that you know they said like oh he weighs like 200 or 300 something pounds and claudio's gonna like lift him like i was like there's no way if claudio spins this man lance will never recover like that was my thought i'm like he's never gonna be able to financially recover from this like it's good well, he's in financial ruin he's in peril <laughs> call the monopoly man he's bankrupt <laughs> <laughs> it's a done deal for him. And I'm glad that he, Claudio did like, it looked like he was kind of mopping with him because Claudio was having a little tough time getting him up. So it was like one, one half swing maybe before the righteous came out. And then they just called the match. And I'm like, this is perfect because Lance Archer, you made him look strong. You didn't make Claudio look weak. And now this builds a storyline, right? You have the BCC and now you have the righteous and Lance Archer. And who knows where we can go with this. I like this. Yo, my cat is being the biggest heel right now. I am so sorry. Your cat <laughs> also likes it. He probably give Lance a chance. Give Lance a chance. Give Lance a chance. I mean, I don't know how you're gonna beat the BCC. They beat each other up for fun. Like that's their that's their uh night a rager a kegger. Is that what the youths say nowadays? <laughs> the youths. Uh, I don't know. So next after this, we get Lexi Nair with Angelo Parker and Ruby Soho. Angelo Parker is mm. responding. So I have to go back because I don't want to say this man's uh, name. Zach, Zach Knight. Knight. Mm -hmm. Responding to Zach Knight saying, I don't care if you don't want to fight me tonight. I want to fight you tonight. So I'm coming and I'm looking for you. And Ruby's like, don't fall into their trap, bro. I told you they were going to do this. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I'm going to fight him though. Yeah. He's Okay, you can fight him, but not without me. He's like, I don't want to get jumped. You right? <laughs> you right? You right? You right? Yeah. You right? You right? You know, sometimes they just need a little help reconsidering, and then the guys will be like, you know what? You're right. And that that's what happened tonight. I'm glad he didn't do anything because we didn't have enough time. I'm like, we got a main event to get to. I I can't deal with this. This got to go on dynamite. <laughs> It's the we don't get paid by the hour, the Judge Judy. Get to the mm. point. Yes. <laughs> we do get to the main event match. Mm. There's a main event segment, but I don't know how those things are called. I'm a jabroni. <laughs> um, so it was a tag team tournament match. 
honoring the House of Black, we have Buddy Matthews and Brody King, along with Julia Hart versus the Infantry. Carly Bravo versus Sean Dean. <clears throat> this again was another match that did not go the way that I thought it was going to go. Mm. What I thought was going to happen, we was going to get a... And then the Adam Copeland segment was going to go long. It was going to be a run-in. Mm -hmm. Christian Cage was going to be a jerk. Okay, I'm not mad. But the infantry tonight said we will not go silently. You know, and it was crazy because I was, like, counting down the time. And I'm like, okay. I was like, okay, well, Kyle still got to go on. And I'm like, does Adam Copeland have a match? And I'm like, oh, well, he's got. I was like, this. the clock was not making sense to me, right? You know what? I did skip that whole Kyle O'Reilly, Brian Keith match. No, and but you know what? It, it messed us up because that's usually where it, and that time was where the women's match goes. So they had that earlier. So it just kind of like trickled down. But also, you know, what was also crazy. Um, right after Claudio and Lance Archer, all hell broke loose after the Righteous came yeah. out. Brian Danielson also came out and Shibata came out. I was like, what? There's so many people here. <laughs> To quote, I want to say this is an ABBA song. I'm upside down, bouncing off the ceiling. Let's go back a little bit. Before that match, <laughs> there was the Kyle O'Reilly and the Brian Keith match after the Lexi Nair, Angelo Parker, Ruby Soho match. This match was so good. Better than any right that it needed to be. Mm. The same thing with the Daniel Garcia match earlier. Yeah. What a good match. Mm -hmm. I kind of lived when Brian Key took off his little um, what's that thing called? A shawl? His little not the shawl. <laughs> <laughs> what's it called? Up? A... Is it a poncho? I think it's a poncho. But yeah, he was like, oh, I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> These two were going stiff for stiff chops. There was this ab stretch by Kyle O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. Brian Keith gets out and still gets the, and Kyle O'Reilly still gets the better of him. The Right when I felt the match was wrapping up, we go straight to ads. We come back from ads. Kyle O'Reilly is working Brian Keith over, and then he hits him with a spinning leg sweep, which is always really nice to see. Commentary in this moment, too, was also putting over how Kyle O'Reilly fought back from injuries, type 2 diabetes. And I'm like, bro, like, Kyle O'Reilly, you really going through it, bro. And welcome back to the point earlier of the subscribers saying, like, Shout out to Modern Medicine that you can come back and wrestle. So happy for him. There's a double underhook power bomb on Kyle O'Reilly from Brian Keith that looked so nasty, but it was only two. Kyle O'Reilly is built differently. Both men start double kicking. We get to the finish, which is a brain buster, into the arm again, which is like a super extended arm bar. And Brian Keith is like, I'll got something. I'm like, ah. <laughs> You're not gonna rip my arm out the socket. It was really good. Mm -hmm. Undisputed Kingdom comes out and lifts up Kyle Ryder. He's kind of like, oh, I, all right, I guess, I guess, I guess. What did you think of this match, Iridian? Man, it was so nice to see Kyle back in that ring. And I think that having him fight um bounty hunter brian keith that was a great choice because i think they really worked well off of each other and brian had this moment where he like had kicked kyle with his knee in the face and then as soon as um kyle was coming back down he kicked him again so it was like twice it was disgusting it was it was truly disgusting but i absolutely loved it and one thing that i do love about kyle is, is like when he they throw him by the ropes and you think he's gonna like go out but then he comes back in through the, mm -hmm. the first or, or second rope and that's something that yuda does too and i absolutely pop when i see that so great on them 10 out of 10 i think that it's interesting that he did not join undisputed kingdom right away um i didn't want him to but in Dynamite, they were talking about how Kyle's like, all right, yeah, I'm going to do it by myself. And um, Roddy was like, okay, by yourself. Like, are you sure you're going to be alone? And Kyle's like, uh, yeah, by myself. Um, so he's also really wary of like, maybe he's got anxiety because I, I have anxiety. So maybe he just didn't want to be out there by himself. <laughs> but I'm glad they came out to support him at the end. Um, I think they're just going to try to really rope him in 
and see like, hey, you know, being with us could benefit you somehow. But I don't know. AEW is the land of uh, groups, factions, if you will. It's true. I just worry that someone like Kyle O'Reilly, <clears throat> sorry, will eventually go against a Jeff Jarrett. And oh, there's a million God. people with Jeff Jarrett. Or you'll eventually go against the House of Black where you'll need the backup. Everyone there is in a faction. Um, Mark Briscoe is kind of a good example, but even he has FTR in his back pocket in a pinch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Eddie Kingston is a good example because uh, Eddie Kingston, and we love Eddie Kingston, but Eddie Kingston is like what you said. And sometimes he does that to everybody. We love Eddie Kingston. <laughs> We love Eddie Kingston. I don't know how many more people he can call, but we, we love Eddie Kingston. We love Eddie. We love Eddie Kingston. We love him. We love him. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think that Kyle O'Reilly's swag doesn't match up with everyone. Mm -hmm. He's not, he's not everyone's kingdom. cup of tea. And I think, undisputed, the kingdom honestly just needs to be out. You know, we need to go back and just have Adam, just have Kyle. And just have Roddy. I don't know what y'all need to do, but y'all need to get Bobby Fish immediately, expeditiously. Y'all need to two day him to AEW. Okay, it needs to happen ASAP. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm dying because on the post impact show, when I first started doing it, mm -hmm. the kingdom was in this group called Honor No More. And I was just like, yo, these guys are, yo, they're under my skin, bro. Like, <laughs> And I'm watching it slowly happen again in real time yeah. in another group. And they're not under my skin. They're really entertaining. But I can see how, if this is like your first introduction to them, how you'd be mm -hmm. like. <sighs> and it's, it's, it's crazy, right? Because at first you're like. Well, for me, I'm like, well, I don't mind them, which mm. is not like a, a reaction that's like here or there. But now it's like, a, all right, we need to move it along. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Mm. I do foresee like I think that the Undisputed Kingdom is great without certain people. Mm. Kyle O'Reilly being there would make someone like um, Adam Cole be more wrestling focused. Yeah. Someone like um, Roderick Strong, be more wrestling focused. Not to say that Matt Taven and... Um, Mike Bennett. Thank you. Mike Bennett aren't wrestling focused, but they're here for the antics. They they love the shenanigans. Yeah. And for a hot minute, when they were un undisputed error... They were they were up for the grapples. They they did the antics, but they they didn't really do the antics. Yeah. Now we all know how to find Bobby Fish. I make this joke every week, and I won't stop. Just go to the docks, sing your sea shanty, and Bobby Fish will be there in a jiffy. <laughs> Listen, I'm here for it. I'm here for. It. I want Bob. I, I want a low key undisputed era reunion. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I think that was part of peak peak peak, peak black and gold era. So. Yeah, that's just me. I think if you know they do get Bobby Fish and they're not Undisputed Kingdom anymore and they can't be Undisputed Era, they're just going to be Undisputed. And Tony Schiavone, it's like much like its thing now, it's just going to be it's Undisputed. So I think that needs to happen. That would be a great faction to have. I would not hate that faction if we dismantle a couple other ones <laughs> in the AW roster. <laughs> And I think there is a place for the kingdom to find two other people. Mm -hmm. And I think the kingdom with two other people with similar styles with the antics could mm -hmm. really improve the overall thing. Cause you would still have Wardlow. So you would just need someone else and you would turn on somebody. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that, I don't know who that person even, would be. Even though. right now with Wardlow, I feel like it's not making sense. I feel like right now they're all kind of doing their own thing. Kind of like Jeff Jarrett's faction, which do they have a name? I don't think they have a right. They don't have a name. So you, when you say Jeff, Jeff Jarrett, Jarrett baby. Actually, it's just Jeff Jarrett. So <laughs> clearly something ain't, ain't right. You know, you think of undisputed kingdom and you think Adam Cole, baby. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have to change a couple of things up here if we really tr are trying to make them a successful group. But I wonder where, wh what Kyle's going to do. Cause he's got to be stressed. He got to be stressed. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I agree. There are certain people in this rest on that roster that I know 
in in the cafe world, working with them must stress you out. Juice Robinson is one of them, mm. and Mike Matt Taven and Mike Bennett together. I'm like, yo, you stressing me out right now, bro. <laughs> You try to do your jumping jazz, get ready, and then say yourself to them like, yo, 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 yo you no, stress me no. out right now. <laughs> I don't mean in real life, guys. Don't be that guy, pal. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are heading into the home stretch. Don't forget to get in your super chats, your humper chats. Tell me, Anna Ridian, how much you love wrestling. Yes. We want to hear it from you with your money. Put your hand in your wallet, in your digital wallet. You know, you know the drill. Humper chats, super chats. And also, like we said, give this a like. It helps us be more popular in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Two woman power trip. You love us. If you love us as host, put it down in the comments because Sean will read that and he'll be like, you know what? Maybe I do like that. Maybe let's have them more do do more stuff. So leave it down in the comments because you love us. Yes. Bang, bang, bong. We next get Lexi Nair with Deanna Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa, which... When Deanna Perrazzo said, I'm going to find myself a tag team partner, I kept yelling at my scream, Taya Valkyrie, Taya Valkyrie. Everyone was like, D-M-D. I'm like, okay, I don't hate that either. <laughs> However, I was not expecting Thunder Rosa. I'm like, ooh, mm. oh, Tony Storm. Now, Mariah May is no slouch. That mm. girl can wrestle. She's here for the antics. But let's not forget, Mariah May can wrestle. Mm -hmm. That being said, Thunder Rosa is one of those girls who's like, I like to wrestle. I like to wrestle. <laughs> and so is Deanna Peraza. So they it's, said, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, when, I don't know if you noticed it, but when Deanna was talking about like, oh, you know, Thunder, I fought you, so I trust you. And Thunder Rosa was like, mm, like I don't know why you trust me. <laughs> She made a face, and I was like, oh, my God. Thunder is just so entertaining, like, through her face. Not even, like, not even just talking about her wrestling, but she's so entertaining as a person. 10 out of 10 for her. She really earned her, her promo stars tonight. It's giving, this is the face I got. I, I didn't say anything, but I can't, this is the face I got. What do you want me to do? <laughs> that, is a, that is a crazy line. We fought, so I trust you. Like, why would you trust me? <laughs> but then the enemy of your enemy is my friend, right? That's true. Yeah. She said, you tapped out. I'm sorry. Deanna Perazzo said, you tapped out. Thunder Rosa said, I never lost my title. And I can only surmise in the broken Spanish that I do know mm -hmm. that Thunder Rosa said, no more games. Mm -hmm. no, more, no more, No more picture show. We're going to beat you two up. No more cosplay. Yo. And I believe it. I could hear my grandma coming down the stairs with a shoe. I don't. Trauma. I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I honestly, I do like Tony Storm and Mariah May. But if that, if that match goes down the way I think it's going to go down, either we cheating, boys. Or Mariah May, you about to take a healthy pin. Oof. Not a healthy pin. I, I I would hope that this match goes to the 20-minute mark. And we mm. don't get a, a contest on this one. Because I also, Thunder Rosa, I didn't think that she was going to be the one that Deanna picked. Um, did I think it was going to be DMD? I don't know. But I'm like, I think there's a possibility. I think she's on her way to like being fully healed. I don't know what that uh, mm. situation is with her injury. But I didn't hate it. But yeah, where are the women like Taya? Come on now. We need stars. Like, not to say Thunder Rose is not a star, but I'm like, there's also other women that you could have picked, but I get it. Thunder Rose is coming back. She um, is really trying to get up in those rankings. So this is going to be good for her. But, and, you know, and she has history with Tony. So it absolutely makes sense. This is going to be a match that you're going to watch. You're going to be like, oh, man, that hurts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I thoroughly enjoy Thunder Rosa, like 4,000%. Mm -hmm. But if she looked at me, I'm mm. the, the match ain't even start yet. I don't care. Don't do it. Mm -mm. So yep. I don't care. I thought you said, though, I did. And you, <laughs> please, I'm going to get beat up anyway. She's like, you're not going to waste my time. And these people came for a show. The I'm bell crying. rings immediately. Mm -mm. Call it. I'm crying the whole match. <laughs> 
please send the rose and stop. Nope. <laughs> I mean that is, again that that match and, these, and don't get me wrong, Tony Storm and Mariah May, like I said, are no slouches in themselves, but. Mm-hmm. That match is gonna hurt. Deanna gonna stretch you. Thunder Rosa gonna slap you. Tony Storm is gonna hit you. She still as Mariah May is gonna pump kick the crap out of you. Like I said, ouch, ouch, me ouchie. Mariah May and Thunder is gonna be really interesting because Mariah is very um, she's also like very hard hitting. So she doesn't hold her, she doesn't hold back her punches. So what we know of Thunder Rosa, she also is very hard hitting and that might be a really, really good matchup. Um, so I'm glad to see that Mariah is going to be in the ring with the three of them because I feel like she's really going to shine. This is going to be another match where people are like, wow, maybe I should start paying attention to Mariah. This is a meat division match, mm. by the way. So get your meat chips. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. We got a super chat from Adam Legend sending us five buccarini. said that first hour of collision felt like the best hour of wrestling in the last decade. Those three matches were perfect mm-hmm. already. And I'll let you start. I'll, I'll let you start this one off. You know what? I, I agree with it. I, I wouldn't say like the, the, in the decade, but like those three matches were fantastic. And it was just such a good way to start off collision. Cause I feel like a lot of people sleep on collision. Right. But when you have just in the opening match, Shibata versus Brian Danielson, you can't tell me that that's not going to be a great show. And then you follow up with the women's match where Trisha Dora just absolutely shined. And even though she didn't pick up the win, like it made her look fantastic. And then you got Danny Garcia and Lee Moriarty, who are arguably the future of AEW, right? These young talents are being showcased in such a great way. Fantastic three first matches. I, I'm glad that we got to see them. What did you think? I mean... I am a little newer, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Started watching again in 2018. So last decade, take <laughs> I, I, that, that's strong for me. I don't want to. I don't. I'm not trying to disparage you. I just say that's a stress mm. strong for me. So I don't have the depth to answer that part. But I will say, as someone who says that there is not self-proclaimed, but now self-proclaimed technical girly, mm. I was very sports entertained. There Great. were other people. That I did not consider, like Trisha Dora, I now consider her in the technical wrestling tree. And these were very interesting matches where you look and you're just like, yikes, ow, oof. Like, like I know that sounds like I'm dragging it, but I'm being so honest. Like, this is a showcase to me, or again, a love letter to Brian Danielson. <laughs> That's why Nigel was so upset tonight. <laughs> He's waiting for his love letter. And fun fact about Nigel McGuinness. Did you know that man knows magic? Like magic, the gathering or like, no, like like Uh magic, like cards. Like there's a video of him and the acclaimed and he was doing magic tricks. And I'm like, there's no way Nigel is out here every week running, running amok and just (laughs) completely just doing everything on collision but then he's out here doing magic i'm like there's no way there's no way i gotta see it in person we have to go to a magic show with nigel mcginnis okay this is i'm not the right one i'm very i'm easily sports entertained he's gonna do the i'm gonna get bamboozled i'm gonna be like how did you do that sir explain immediately as a matter of fact don't explain on what I want to be sports entertained. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You know what? Just do it again. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. <laughs> now, you go finesse this out of all of them. Like, hey, where my watch? Go ahead. Hey, get this guy. <laughs> I will say, before Brian Danielson retires, if we don't get a Brian Danielson versus Nigel Beginners match, I don't want it. Throw the whole AEW away. I'm, I'm so serious. And you know what? I need them to start cutting promos again uh, on one another. Right now, it's very one-sided, right? Nigel gets his comment here and there mm-hmm. on commentary. I need him backstage cutting actual promos and then right next to it running a Brian Danielson promo. Like, I want to say that that's where this is going, right? That Brian's last match that's is the retirement officially- match. That's the retirement <laughs> match. It's officially him versus Nigel, and Brian's going to pick up the win. Like, that's what's happening in my mind. Um, but man, that's where hopefully this is going is that retirement because there's no way Nigel can keep getting away with this every week. I agree. Even Stokely Hathaway got slapped in the back of his head. I'm just going to say, I. Nigel is, I mean, Nigel has had people look at him and he's disintegrated. So <laughs> I 
forgot what man. I think it was Samoa Joe who said, "Shut up, Nigel." He said, "Yes, sir." And he, said, he, <laughs> he was zapped. <laughs> but you're right, Nigel. Can't keep getting away with this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have honky tonked enough. We are at our final match, which was part of the tag team tournament. We're back for the second part of that. Cut to that. That first time didn't happen. House of Black. <laughs> Buddy Matthews and Brody King with Julia Hart versus the Infantry with Carly Bravo and Sean Dean. Mm -hmm. What I thought was going to happen didn't happen. And this, Same. Is, a, this Same. is a classic case of don't play with your food now. <laughs> so before the match even starts, the House of Black is like, these guys are taking too long, grandstanding and hot dog, and they push them off the ring and beat the, beat the crap out of them. Okay. The ref is like, can you go infantry? Infantry says, uh, yes, yes, ring the bell. These guys just get beat up. There was a running senton powerbomb on Carly Bravo, and I in my best um Jim Ross, ring the bell, ring the bell. You got a family, goddamn it, ring the bell. Cause I like, I, I could have swore I saw everything leave that man's body. Mm -hmm. Jeez, Brody King is a L O R G E, a lorge. There's a two count immediately broken up by Sean Dean, and I was like, bro, I, I don't know if I would have broke that up. This is a, <laughs> this is a punishment match. Like you, I respect it, truly do, but yikes. The match continues. <laughs> I remember Brody King just ran through Carly. Oof. <laughs> I don't even know what happened, but it sounded like oof. At one point, this man woofs at up. <laughs> mm. That was so sad. I think it was Sean D. He woofs at. The man gets scared, and Buddy Matthews just kicks this man's stomach. It was kind of a beating. There was a Dante's Inferno onto Sean Dean. The pin was stopped by Carly Bravo. And it was at this point Brody King said, you had your chance. And in my mind, I said, oh, we about to witness a muckalization. Mm. That word sounds ugly because that was what was about to happen. We was about to miss a moita. A moita. A moita. <laughs> <laughs> this man proceeds to take Carly Bravo. Put him through the announce table. The announce table no sells it. He rips off the top, hits this man with a pal driver on the announce table. The announce table still no sells him. <laughs> Carly Bravo dead. He dead on the outside. So Buddy Matthews goes up and pulls uh, uh, Sean Dean's dead body into the middle of the ring. Mm. Goes to Frog Splash. Out comes a wild Mark Briscoe. Hits Buddy Matthews with the chair. Oh, let me say this before this happened. Sean Dean was pinned by Buddy Matthews. And Buddy Matthews pulls his shoulder up like, ha, 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 no death for you. I'm going to play with my food. <laughs> and that's where he messed up. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. right there, take the picture. That's where he messed up. So Mark Briscoe hits this man with the chair. This man falls, takes a tumble, hits his head. And Sean Dean just hits him with the, uh. One, two, three. The infantry pin House of Black. Julia Hart is pressed. Panini Malachi Black is out there. Infantry said one, two. Blues could do because we not staying out here. We ain't messing with you. That was. This was. And mind you, mind you, I'm so sorry. Brody King chases off Mark Briscoe like you not in the middle of a match. My guy, what are you doing? Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. I could not believe that that is how that match ended, but I laughed. That I was sported. To it was a good match. <clears throat> and this is why you should never judge a book by its cover. I know House of Black is hot, steaming, on fire. Ooh, Mal that shot at the end of Malachi's face, like, I'm going. Everybody, everyone's getting a kick to the face. Everyone's getting mm. a kick to the face. I don't, I don't care. I said, I'm Shawn Michaels style. You were into, mm, I don't care. You, mm, everyone getting a kick to the face. Aridian, what did you think of this match? This was wild, right? Insane. The fact that these guys picked up the win, uh, my eyes opened up so big, my contact fell out. This is no lie, okay? <laughs> my, <laughs> the amount that I was not expecting this, I was like, 
And then my contact literally was like, what? Like, what was going on? I don't know. My, like, uh uh-uh. um. <laughs> that was the wildest sentence. <laughs> and it's the wildest thing that's happened. <laughs> But, wrestling, ladies and gentlemen, oh, this is what wrestling does, man. It's it's it makes you do crazy stuff. And I initially I was not there when um, uh, the House of Black came out, so I thought that Malachi was actually it was Malachi and Buddy. But then when I heard the audience barking, I'm like, is what's happening here? Like, is Brody out there? And yeah, it was Brody. So I was like, oh, okay, that makes way more sense. And then in my head, I'm like, the bell hasn't rung. Why are y'all fighting? What's going on? And I just the fact that I didn't expect the infantry to really pull this off with the help of Mark Briscoe, of course, is literally insane because now they're moving on in the tournament. And, you know, in this tag tournament, we I think there's a couple tag teams that are missing that should have really been in there. But I don't hate the fact that the infantry is moving forward because they are a tag team that does need some shine on them. And with this tournament, they are going to get that shine. And now they got beef with the House of Black. That's wild. They're not gonna be safe. <laughs> oh no! House of like, like I said, the end shot of Malachi are pretty much looking like that meme of the soccer dad doing the <laughs> the that was Malachi. <laughs> he looked so scary. Like I knew he was gonna get back. He was gonna go backstage and he was gonna whoop them all. Like everyone was gonna get it, bro. I literally heard in my mind the Pokemon Wild Pokemon theme. When Mark Briscoe ran out, hit this man with the chair, and then scampered off, I said, oh, you not safe either, though, but I see you have chosen violence. <laughs> you know, when Peck was talking about trouble, this was trouble. This is what he was talking about. <laughs> Bro, I, Mark Briscoe, you crazy. You crazy, dog. I respect it. I respect it. I mean, but also they they did they did while out on Mark Briscoe. The mm-hmm. infantry went in, that automatically catapults them. Again, yeah, you guys ain't safe. I don't know what y'all gonna do for the next match because House of Black gonna get their look back. And it's kind of not your fault, Mm -hmm. but also, you know, they saw losers. I'm sorry. (laughs) You know, they saw losers. And you know what? I think that they really threw us off by having that house rule stipulation earlier with Julia and Trisha Dora. Because we're like, all right, Trisha Dora didn't win. Clearly, the infantry is not gonna get the win because Julia is gonna get involved in this and Mm -hmm. this. But this was a really fun twist that they added to it. And I was not mad. I'm like, okay, I was entertained. Yeah. Yeah, this was a good uh, a good pre-main event to warm us up for the juicy. I think we had like stuff. six, seven minutes left. So I was like, what is Adam Copeland going to say? Mm-hmm. I have to pause real quick. My Hold on one second because I have to cough. And I'm not going to do that in y'all ears. <laughs> We love a host who turns their mic off when they cough. In radio, we have a cough button. So, period. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that to y'all. I I, I could not believe that the infantry. Moved good on y'all. Forward. Yeah, and they won. Good for them. Finally, our main event: Adam Copeland. There's a video package for him versus. Sting, not Sting. Oh my goodness, that man already retired. Girl, don't do that to him. <laughs> Sting versus Christian Cage. And then it was the in-ring promo of Adam Copeland. Now, I'm going to hit the highlights because I want to talk about what this spike thing was. And I'm glad we didn't drag that on. So I appreciate you, AEW. Tony Khan, I be giving you hell. But tonight, I appreciate you. I'll I see you, Tony. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... <clears throat> He starts off his promo saying, I didn't know if I would perform here because if memory serves me correctly, this was the place he also had to announce that he had to retire at. He's like, I didn't know if I'd perform here or anywhere in my hometown or anywhere ever again, you know? So being back here in AEW with my best friend or someone I thought was my best friend, I didn't come to mess with you. I came to retire with you. I didn't come to retire you. He said, but bro, now now you believe in the gimmick. You're no longer Jay, which I guess is his shoot name. I don't know. I'm not that guy, pal. I, I know people's I know people's stage. I'm not that guy, pal. Yeah. So I'm like, wow. He's like, you, you've become the gimmick. And quite honestly, I'm not interested. He said, so I got a phone call from someone who reminded me of who I was. I should have wrote these names down, but I knew the references. They were both a spiked bat reference. And I'm like, oh, that's either Mick Foley or Abyss. And the other one was the other person. So it was both. And I was like, well, who you got a call from? <laughs> and when he was like, I got a call from Mick Foley's, I mean, Mrs. Foley's son. I was like, period. 
already knew what time it was. He pulled out this two by four covered in spikes. Mm -mm. He then says, I earned my shot at the Cope Open and I had it and you screwed me over. So now I'm going to force you to say I quit. Now I'm going to make it where you can't look your kids in the eye. I took a deep sigh because y'all know how I feel about blood. And I, looking at that bat, I know what's in store and I hate it. I love it. I live. I was hoping these two can work it out. But looking at that bat there, what we talking about? What are we talking about? No, I'm on the same page with uh, I'm on the same page with you. What are we doing? What's going on? Um, I don't know if you watched Toy Story, but do you remember that kid who like destroyed all his toys? Spike. Uh, that's what that's giving. L little little Sid is giving his little spike thing. Like he would have one of those toys. Insane. And what kind of match is this gonna be? Like, is this? <laughs> it's an I quit match. I mean, uh, like I'm weak. <laughs> there's gonna be so much blood. I already know, and I know. I know they're in the back within their little group chat or like he heing it up like, oh, my God, are you ready? We're going to do this and we're going to do. Oh, my God. There's just no way that these guys trust each other so much that they're like, yeah, let's even put on a match like this. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. I'm going to have my little my, my little blanket ready and I'm just going to be like, no, cover my eyes or just, you know, peek through like this. There is a quote in World of Warcraft, and I'm sorry, I'm digging deep in my nerdy bag. I mean, I do have a peach shirt on today. Uh, a bad guy famously says, you are not prepared. And that's me. I am not prepared. I I, I don't like this when I have to cover PCO matches and TNA. I don't like this when I have to cover our Bryson matches. I don't like it. BCC matches, Moxley matches. This is me like, mm. <laughs> I mean, I can understand it makes a good story. And I'm not saying there's anything against the art form. It is me. I am weak. My mm -hmm. bloodline is weak. It's me. I'm soft. I'm S-A-W-F-T soft. Okay? I'm same. So we're technical girlies and soft. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll see a man get his arm ripped out the socket, but I don't want to see no blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. What kind of stuff? wrestling? What is this? <laughs> um, uh, and I that's that's how we uh that's how we end it. He says Mick Foley reminded me of who the heck I am, and that was Collision. Yeah, that was Collision. What would you rate it tonight? You know, even with uh, Spike being introduced, do you think that added to the show? What do you think? Out of uh, let's do out of ten, what would you rate the show for tonight? Out of ten, I would give this. Honestly, being confused by Harley Cameron, <laughs> notwithstanding. Uh -huh. oh, sorry, that was disgusting. Sorry. Um, I would give it a nine. I was okay. very sports entertained. I don't have a complaint. Like, listen, again, I love wrestling. And some people say, you're still in the honeymoon phase. Well, God damn it, I love you, baby. Because I'm like, I'm very, I was very sports yeah. entertained. It wasn't like the best ever, you mm -hmm. know. But the things that I thought were going to go one way, they mm -hmm. didn't go that way. That way. Yeah. And it was a nice surprise. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh. What did you, well, what would you rate it out of 10? Um, I think I might go a little lower than you. Um, I want to say maybe a seven, uh, maybe 7.5. But I, I agree with you that I'm glad that, you know, we didn't see a Lance Archer, you know, jobber match that we actually mm -hmm. got to see him fight, that we got to see Julia and Trisha Dora really have their time. And we got some really good promos and some furtherings of storylines. So I thought it was a great show overall. I think if maybe people haven't watched Collision in a long time, that maybe this one would be the one to watch to kind of get you back into the, the thrill of it. But man, really, really good stuff tonight. Honestly, the only thing I'm not looking forward to is that I quit match. And again, not because it's not going to be good. It's going to slap. My stomach is just weak and I am you, soft. You said my stomach's going to slap. <laughs> I am a baby. I am a child. I am but a child. Um, real quickly, I know we normally um just put super chats and humper chats, but uh, I just have to say this: I am an Illidan stand. I played World of Warcraft for a very long time, and that's another story for another time. Iridian, where can the folks find you? 
you guys can head over to my YouTube channel at Rust Friends. That's W-R-E-S-T Friends. And you can find all of my videos there. I do vlogs. I do interviews. And it's all talking about the world of wrestling. Or follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at Iridian underscore Fiero. Cresta, where can the beautiful audience of Fightful find you? Ladies and gentlemen, you can find me almost everywhere with the except of X, also known as Twitter.com, at Crestastar, C-R-E-S-T-A-S-T-A-R-R, -R, like a pirate double R. On Twitter, it's Cresta the Star, like Megan the Stallion. There is a link tree in my bio. I have a podcast coming out. I've got videos coming out, so please subscribe to my YouTube. I'm so excited to share these things with you. And I'm also here every Thursday with Joe Pearl talking about TNA. Every Saturday here with the beautiful Iridian. Sometimes Rick, sometimes Sean. Sometimes it's a, it's a mixed bag, but it's mostly a two-woman power chip and the colliders as always. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to Fightful Select. Get all your scoops, all your, your Q&A with Grapsity, all of your interviews with their lovely Sean Ross Sapp. And thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Take care of yourself and each other. Bye-bye now. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.